Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Disney Dining Show. Fiasco here, joined by Denny and Steve. Hey there. And today we are going to do something that none of us have ever done before, and that is dine at Coral Reef. Yeah. Yay, very excited. This uh, this has been on my radar for a long, long time, just never gotten over to do it. So. I'm a little unsure about eating fish in front of fish, but we'll yeah, that. right. Ooh. Yeah, seems a little I like weird, eating fish in front a, of a little, fish. a little he, offensive, maybe. He likes eating fish in front of fish, <laughs> and we're right next to the uh, the Big Blue World with Nemo, so I feel bad for feel bad for those guys. Mm. But what can you really do? That's how it goes sometimes. So let's go get some fish. All right, so just sat down at Coral Reef, about to order some appetizers to start off, but we just had a few thoughts we wanted to share. Uh, just immediately coming into the restaurant. Big aquarium tank here on the wall, which I'll insert uh, that video here. Um, but just my immediate impression when I first walked in was I was surprised at how much space they're giving everybody because it's a little bit of a reoccurring trend at restaurants at Epcot where they try to pack in as much seating as they possibly can. And a lot of uh, locations kind of feel like you're on top of each other. Not the case here. It uh, looks like basically every seat that you could possibly get in this restaurant, you're going to have a fair amount of space. You're not going to feel like you're on top of your diners next to you or, or aside from you, uh, which I, I really do appreciate. We haven't tasted any food yet, but I do appreciate that. Uh, so let's see what the others think of uh, this atmosphere. All right, so initial thoughts for walking in. It is beautiful. It's a lovely lobby that is really well appointed, lots of nautical touches everywhere. Um, they have the seating in a terraced format. So it's a, you know, you've got steps leading down to the aquarium, and we have a really great table where yeah. we can see all the action happening in the aquarium. I can imagine it really depends. If you're up against the window, that's a great view. The second uh, row is, a little, is up a, a step, so they have a good view. Unfortunately, I think the third and fifth rows were in the fourth, so we also have a good view, but the third and fifth like rows kind of are the booth seating, and it's they have to look over our row, or if you're the third row, you have to look over the second row. Sorry, it's yeah. technical, but... But they're on the same level as, as another whole entire row. So they're so. looking through the party that's in front of them rather than over the party that's in front of them. Um, I, I will say, I, I think it's really beautiful in here as it well. Is. It kind of, for some reason, reminds me of like the decor that would be on a cruise ship. Totally. I thought Disney Cruise Line, as soon as we walk, walked in and we saw the lights that were hanging from the ceiling, totally thought D, DCL and something that they would have done. Yeah, there's definitely a cruise line feel in here. here. Maybe it's the ocean vibes, I don't know, but... Um, very beautiful and you pointed out the ceiling is has like kind of a projection effect that makes it look like you're under the water um so it's cool i like the environment okay so we're going to talk about our appetizers uh real quick while we're here at this part of the meal um i chose the mushroom lobster style salad so this is actually something that is on the new plant-based menu here at Walt Disney World Resort. This is a really big deal. And so whenever you see, I'm going to show you real quick, whenever you see that little couple of leaves on a menu, that tells you that those things are plant-based. It explains that it does not contain any animal meat, dairy, eggs, or honey. So basically, this is as if you were eating a lobster appetizer. It's been seasoned and treated just like a lobster, you know, lobster meat would. It's we definitely old bay. definitely picked up on the old day. Um, it's also got avocado. It's got hearts of palm, tomato, and it comes with a lavash crisp, which that's flatbread, um, unleavened flatbread, and it is delicious. And you feel and taste like you're eating seafood. So if I were a vegetarian who came to this beautiful seafood restaurant, I would totally feel like I'm eating something on par, seafood-based, like the rest of my traveling party was. I wouldn't miss out on a thing eating this dish. It's and, $13. Yeah, and when you ordered it, to be honest, I said, braver than I. <laughs> but then when it came out, I was like, actually, that looks pretty good. And then we all kind of tried each other's dishes, and I think you got the best one. I'm shocked. Yeah. I'm shocked. It's really good. Uh, I got the um, 
Lobster macaroni and cheese. Uh, mine is technically a side dish, not an appetizer. There's only four appetizer options, uh, and one of them is a salad, and one of them is shrimp cocktail, and Corey got a crispy shrimp. So I felt like if I wasn't going to get a salad and I wasn't going to get another shrimp dish because it's too similar, I wanted to get something different. Fortunately for me, mac and cheese, I love mac and cheese. You all know that. Uh, but it's a lobster mac and cheese dish. It's $13, uh, toasted with applewood smoked bacon, uh, baby spinach, uh, pepidou peppers, uh, and her, uh, herb toasted panko. I don't, These are breadcrumbs, Japanese-style breadcrumbs, panko. Good thing we have her on the team now. Um, and it's a fairly large dish. Uh, or it's not massive, but it's, you know, for pasta, pasta's pretty filling. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this all before my entree because I want to save some room for more food. Um, and pasta's very fil- filling. Um, the, the dish is delicious. It, I love mac and cheese. It... It was, I think, right be- behind hers and what I liked of the three appetizers. But I was disappointed with the lack of uh, lobster meat in the dish. It is kind of deceiving when something is called lobster mac and cheese and you really have to, like, search for the pieces. And it's to say it's shredded up pieces is, like, being generous. The biggest piece I found was still smaller than a dime. Um... Yeah, there were chunks of lobster, and you would you would hope there would be, but, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what you get out of a $13 dish that's going to have lobster in it, but even if it's not a ton, like, I would rather have a couple big chunks than a ton of small shreds, because especially with mac and cheese, the cheese is so thick that the, it's kind of like covering up all the lobster meat. And so any of the lobster flavor just gets totally lost in the cheese. But it's, I mean, that is very critical, though, because it still tastes delicious. It's just, if you're looking for lobster, this is not the place to go. All right, so like Steve mentioned, I got the crispy fried shrimp with the spicy sriracha aioli. That was $9. Uh, This is one of, like, my kind of go-to appetizers. This is very similar to the uh, crispy shrimp that I got at Turf Club that I really liked. Um, kind of similar to the, to the appetizer you get at Yak and Yeti, which is honestly my favorite. At Yak and Yeti, they're a little bit smaller. These ones are a little bit bigger. Yak and Yeti are a little bit more saucy. These ones are a little bit more of a drizzle. But uh, with that being said, really, really good. I liked them a lot. Uh, my only complaint was the dish is a little bit small. But with that being said, it's also the most affordable appetizer that you can choose from. Aside from I'm seeing uh, you, you can get clam chowder, that's eight bucks. But besides that, it is the most affordable option. Uh, and I'm gonna echo what the other two said. Denny's plant-based lobster dish here was delicious. Uh, I love me some vegan and vegetarian options. I know I've mentioned that, uh, that quite a few times and it might be confusing. You might be wondering why I'm so into vegan foods. Uh, actually, if you went to my uh, home right now, my fridge and my freezer is actually still filled with lots of vegan options. I was actually vegan for nine months when I first got out of the service to uh, improve my blood pressure. And it actually, doing that diet for nine months completely improved my blood pressure, but I also lost a lot of weight. So I needed to keep myself from losing weight and now I don't, I'm not vegan anymore, but I still appreciate some good vegan food so much so that that is my entree. So I think after, uh, after we conclude this dining review, we would have ordered every plant-based option on this menu. So look forward to that. And then the others are obviously going to order things that aren't plant-based. So look forward to that too. And entree should be out in just a moment. All right, so I decided to try the seared mahi-mahi, and the dish was so good. It has jasmine rice. It comes with um, a Caribbean shrimp salsa, so it's seasoned with coconut and with lime, and it is just really, really good. It does have a kick to it, so if you don't like spicy food, watch out. Maybe um, just keep that in mind, but it's it's really good. Um, the mahi-mahi is a little on the dry side, Personally, I'm usually fine with that. Um, it kind of drives my family nuts. Um, but it is a little dry, even for my taste. So 
that's one thing that I would I would probably ding it on. But it's it's really good. It's very inventive, and um, and all in all, tasted really good. It was thirty one dollars. Um, this is not an inexpensive restaurant, so that's something to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. While you're in a theme park, you're in a Disney theme park, you're in Epcot, and it's going to cost you a little bit to come and dine with the fishes. So, Steve? Yes, I got the shrimp and grits. Uh, it's sautéed shrimp, cheddar cheese grits, uh, corn succotash, sausage, and Creole spices. Um, very good. Delicious. I thought this was a fantastic dish. At first, it concerned me because the outer layer that's underneath the shrimp that kind of circled the dish, the grits were very plain. Um, But as you work your way in towards the middle, that's where all the sausage is. It's where all the spices are. It's where all the flavor is. Um, So I kind of started to mix that up with some of the more plain grits, and then it was perfect, delicious. Um, So just if you're going to get this dish... Be prepared that the first bite might be disappointing, but just keep on keeping on because it's going to be really good. Um, yeah, the shrimp were delicious. I thought this was a, 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 a good option. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, $30. Again, like you said, it is expensive. I will also say that this is a very, from at least my experience, a pretty filling. Uh, I mean, you some of you guys had some of the vegan options, which may have been a little less filling. Both of mine were pasta and then grits, and it was just a lot of heavy food. You got some heavy stuff. And so if I were here for a theme park day right now, like, I could not go on test track right now, even if I wanted to, or Mission Space would not want me to get on because I, I won't even say. Bad. Yeah. Um, so just take it, realize that, you know, if you're going to come here and you're planning and you have fast passes for later for some thrill attractions, like those two rides, that, uh, you know, just be aware of that when you're ordering. Yes. Um, but overall, very good. So like I hinted at before, I got the grilled garden vegetable skewer that has roasted kefta, bas- basmati rice, lentils, sm- and a smoked eggplant salad. Um, there's a lot of different flavors going on on this plate, and I think it's 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 a real uh, compliment to, to the vegetarians and vegans. It's there's a lot of different things to taste. Uh, the skewer itself with the vegetables on it, it tastes like it's coming off like a smoky grill. It's really nicely charred. Uh, I was saying that the zucchini on that skewer was like perfectly cooked because I, I cook with zucchini a lot. At, uh, well, I don't cook a lot at home, but Me and Haley have cooked zucchini at home before, and we never get it right, ever. It's always, like, too overcooked, and it becomes, like, uh, soggy when you have it in the pan too long. I've also been to a lot of restaurants where it's it's too soggy. This had the perfect, like, uh, charred, grilled crisp on the end, and you got that smoky flavor, but the inside was, like, firm and juicy. Loved it, loved it, every bit of it. Uh, And then the smoked eggplant salad on the side had like a nice little spice to it. So you had like the smoky barbecue flavor of the skewer, the little bit of a spicy kick of the smoked eggplant salad. And yeah, you got the rice and then you got some uh, some juicy tomatoes on the, the edge too. Uh, also the lentils, plantless lentils. Uh, that, that had a great flavor too. And then the combination of any of those together, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, that was $24. If you look at all the entrees on the menu, that's the cheapest option too. And it's all vegetables, so rightfully so. Uh, but I would definitely come back here again. I also got a chance to try uh, Denny's Mahi Mahi. And I, I would agree with what you said there. 31 bucks. it's a little bit more of an expensive Mahi Mahi. Uh, to, to compare it to something like Sebastian's Bistro, which I think is like in the 20s. Uh, I would prefer Sebastian's Mahi Mahi, but with that being said, I did still think this tasted pretty good. Uh, but yeah. We talked a little bit about the environment in the restaurant here, and I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier in the review, but this is a very loud restaurant, uh, and it, it just there's not a lot to you know the, to dampen the noise. Uh, so just worth taking a note of that. So apologize if this video is kind of loud from forks and things clanking around, and just it being a loud restaurant in general. So I got the chocolate wave, which uh, let me give you a before picture of that right now. 
and it's a warm flourless chocolate cake with chocolate curls, raspberry gelato. It's not sorbet, it's gelato. I was telling the others it was sorbet. It's raspberry gelato, and that is $9.50. Now that you saw the before picture, here is the after picture. And neither of the others can tell you how it was because they didn't have any. I ate this all to myself. And the only thing that could make me like this more is if there was more of it. If there was more cake, if there was more gelato, that's the only way. I loved this dessert so much. The chocolate cake was warm. It was very like fudgy and warm. Um, and then the cold raspberry gelato on top of it, I mean. And then it, it also had some like uh, some raspberry puree in there too with like the very thin chocolate curls. On all levels, I love this. This is, the, this, is, this is what I look for in a dessert. And again, disclaimer, I am biased because warm chocolate cake and ice cream, I don't think I've ever not liked it. Okay, so I had the key lime tart that uh, features a toasted meringue and um, a tropical fruit coulis. It's so good. So I love key lime. It's a favorite of mine, and this was a really nice and thick um, key lime tart. It wasn't anything... Um, there was nothing shy about it. The meringue was perfectly uh, per perfectly toasted, perfectly done, and uh, the key lime was nice and tart, so I loved it. I got the angel food cake. Uh, it came with uh, uh, fresh berries topped with whipped cream and a berry glaze, $8. This is a no sugar added dessert which for half a second I almost it almost made me change my mind on what I was going to get but I was like no I really like angel food cake I'm going to stick with it and I'm glad that I did it was really really delicious and after I've already mentioned this a hundred times during this meal but I had a really heavy app and entree so having angel food cake which is a lighter dessert it was perfect uh, and I'm really glad that I got it it was really fresh um, I don't think these were frozen berries, which uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but they didn't taste frozen. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was very good. Yours was $8. Yes. And then the key lime tart was 9 So I think that's a, that's a I think pretty that, good value. Yeah, I think definitely more affordable than the uh, entrees and the apps yes. were. Like, this is more yeah. online with what you'd find at most locations for dessert pricing, I think. But, yeah, so... And they Very were good. nice size. Yeah. So, all in all, good. All right, so we just got uh, done eating at Coral Reef. And what do you guys think? It's delicious. It was a really great um, experience, a lovely environment and atmosphere. Um, like Steve said already in the vlog, it was loud. It was a really loud um, restaurant. So your kids, your little ones, are going to fit right in if, they're, if they've got wiggles and um, they want to be chatty. But if you're having a nice family celebratory dinner, it's going to be hard at times to hear the conversation happening at the table. Uh, sometimes that can be frustrating, but the food itself was great. Yeah. I kind of feel like the standout in my book was the appetizer that I had, um, the mushroom lobster um, style salad. It tasted just like lobster. And Ileana was our server. She was great. She was, yeah. uh, so ask for Ileana if you come to the Coral Reef. But um, Ileana inquired um, of the chefs exactly what the preparation was. And basically, they're oyster mushrooms that they um, prepare just like they would prepare lobster. So it's been poached with Old Bay. Steve was the one to pick up the Old Bay in the I dish. I love Old Bay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that, was, that was kind of a standout, uh, big time. Yeah, for me, uh, the, the my standout was definitely the, my entree. There's lots of different flavors going on there, and for it to be completely plant-based, I really give them a lot of credit for how many flavors they stepped onto that plate, and everything complemented each other really, really well. Uh, for me, I think everything was good. Uh, the the grits the, and shrimp were delicious. The shrimp and grits were delicious. The uh, lobster mac and cheese was really good, but again, not big chunks of lobster, which was just slightly disappointing, um, despite it being really good. Uh, otherwise, and yes, the noise would be my main issue. It's not a place that I would recommend to have like a romantic dinner no. because it's no. loud and <laughs> just, you know. Too many friends for a romantic dinner. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's a cool restaurant. It's worth checking out if you've never been before. This was all of our first experiences and I would want to come back sometimes. 
Sorry. So, uh, it's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, sometimes you know you come to a new restaurant and you realize why you never came, and I think with this experience, I'll be back. Yeah, for yeah. listeners who have been listening to the Diz Unplugged for a long time, you'll know that the Coral Reef is pretty infamous around these parts. So it was one of Kevin's first restaurant reviews, and we all remember the sad little crab cake. So I'm we were just reporting today that the sad little crab cake is not on the menu. It's gone. Although so, the plates, I think, are still the same because there's some huge plates. Like the plate that uh, Corey's uh, main entree came on was massive. Ginormous. Yeah. So, so I bet you that's the plate that the, the crab cakes used to be on. They just right. like their plates big around these parts. Yeah. And I, I mean, I will say, I think uh, this is this is a great restaurant for families with uh, young kids. Um, if, if, especially if like your kids like can't keep quiet during during a meal, there's always something to look at here. It's the giant wall aquarium, so there's always something to keep them entertained while they're waiting for their food or their juice or whatever they're waiting for. That's going to keep them occupied in the meantime. So that's it. It's the coral reef. So two thumbs up. It's great. We hope you enjoy your time if you decide to stop by. Let us know in the comments if you've been there before, um, if you've had a favorite server or a favorite dish, and uh, what you thought about it. Thanks for watching. See you. Thanks. Bye. So just a quick addendum. Uh, you thought the video was over. No, not yet. Um, so uh, there's a special menu that is celebrating the 30th anniversary of The Little Mermaid. It starts on October 19th, and so it might be going on when this video goes up. Now bye for real this time. <laughs> That's it. For real.